Hello, welcome back to Rich Tech. We're going to try to convert this 45 watt MagSafe 1 uh, charger into a MagSafe 2 charger. This should be interesting. For that conversion to take place, you have to change this uh, connector from a MagSafe 1 to a MagSafe 2 connector. Now, this is important because sometimes you may want to use uh, your MacBook Air and you only have a charger like this. And this uh, connector can't go in there because that's a different type of connection right there. You need a uh, this MagSafe 2 connector to plug in there. Let me show you this. It's a MagSafe 2 connector goes in there. This is a MagSafe connector cannot go in there. So the only choice you have is to buy another part known as a MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 adapter. It's a very important uh, adapter or connector. This other side has MagSafe 2 output and this other side has a MagSafe 1 input. So to demonstrate this, this is your MagSafe 1 connector. You connect it to this. It has a magnet, picks it up and uh, the connection is found. And then now you can use this connect that to your computer and uh, it will work so that's one way what if you don't have this connector the only option you have now is to convert the connector into a MagSafe 2 and uh, that's what we want to do now when I connected this to this connector this old MagSafe 1 connector does not fit properly there because it is uh, wedge shaped the pins of the magsafe one can't connect properly to the contact points these pins cannot connect to the contact points in this because this thing is wedge shaped you can see that the cross section so it can't fit in there but uh, if i test it with a macbook pro it fits uh, perfectly and you can see it is charging So this uh, MagSafe 1 adapter is okay, but uh, this connector is useless. So the only choice we have is to cut off that cable and uh, fix a connector right here or fix a new cable with a MagSafe 2 connector. Stay tuned. Now instead of uh, cutting off this connector from there and connecting a MagSafe 2 connector there, I have uh, decided to remove the whole of this wire. I'll use it for another project because I find out that we can get that uh, missing part over this connector and because it's still working, there's no need to destroy it. And uh, with that, I've gotten a new cable. You can see both ends have nothing connected to them. Then uh, at each end, I'll connect this connector and this junction so i'll cut off this cable the magsafe one cable of course i've already opened the charger board itself if you don't know how to open the charger board you can see my other videos they have the way how to now before connecting this connector to the cable you have to check if it's working so I'll just connect it directly to the wires which is coming from the adapter itself. Of course I've connected the adapter to the power cable. As you can see it's charging. It's amber. So this connector is okay. We can use it. To prepare the connector, you need to cut off this outer and uh, top rubber insulation. Being careful not to cut off. The inner one so you cut off uh, carefully around until you remove this top part 
After peeling off the outer insulation, you peel the inner insulation to reveal these wires inside the cable. And I've also uh, removed the insulation from the tip of the positive wire. This the positive wire is the white one with the white insulation. This is the negative wire. So I put these strands aside. And now I want to solder uh, this cable to this. I'll also do the same here and strip this portion and uh, get the positive wire out. Meanwhile, we remove this from uh, that end. So I'll insert it on this other end of this cable, which we want to use. Peel off this and expose the wires inside. Meanwhile, uh, I've slid in a piece of heat shrink tubing over this positive wire and uh, this is to be used or we are going to use it to cover the joint which will form here after soldering and this soldering wire, uh, this uh, heat shrink tubing, I've expanded it and to prevent it from shrinking back to its original size or even less because we'll be applying heat here when soldering I'll put this piece of wire to hold it uh, in the expanded state so that when we are through we'll remove this wire and just slide it over this joint we want to solder this positive to the positive next we're applying soldering wire to the ends of this positive wire using our soldering bit we'll do the same to this other end now we can uh, solder this together so I want to hold this straight to the wire and apply the heat gently. Then you should uh, solder also the opposite side because the solder has not uh, come all the way to this other side. If the soldering is done correctly then this joint should be neat and tidy and also thin because you don't want a bulge at this point so next we'll put some uh, glue to aid in the strengthening of the joint and also to aid in the insulation and then we'll slide this heat shrink tubing over it and shrink it down to size you can shrink the heat shrink tubing with the, the soldering gun The heat shrink tubing has uh, shrunk and covered the joint and no wires are being seen. So our positive kick our wire is uh, perfectly soldered. Now we'll spread these negative wires over the joint. First you spread the wires from the connector side, then you spread the wires from the cable side over them. Now both wires are ready to be glued together. Now someone may think uh, we may want, need to solder this, but it's not necessary. Uh, it may surprise you that uh, a little glue is enough to hold these wires together. And uh, it doesn't stop the wires from conducting. Just apply a little glue, not much. Then uh, using something like this piece of uh, plastic so that the glue does not stick to your fingers then roll this together that is the result the wires are neatly packed together then before much drawing occurs you can go on and squeeze them gently with a pair of pliers so as to make a round and neat package. Now we can test the connector. Already it's connected to the MacBook and uh, on, on this other end I'll connect it to our adapter body. Now this connector is working. It's turned from green to amber. Now on this other end of the cable you we'll slide in this rubber junction again if you 
do not know how to come up with such a junction just check my other videos i may also link them in the description below to close the joint or to cover it we simply pull this rubber insulation over the joint slowly until no space is left we are about to close the joint but before we do so we need to apply some glue to this little space remaining so that when we pull this rubber insulation it will remain uh, at that position it will not come back at last the gap is uh, sealed this uh, rubber insulation has covered it completely now we test again and the joint has not been affected by any way in any way when we are pulling the rubber insulation over the joint so what remains is to cover this joint so that's no like some glue all around the joint then slide this uh, rubber insulation just like that then wipe off excess glue quickly so that it doesn't dry up that point this is the finished joint the joint is strong and the connector works because that's the whole point of it now we have only this side to connect to the charger and this one will solder now the positive wire is already soldered and insulated with this black tip I want to solder the negative wire to the negative wire and insulate it so wires insulated soldered and insulated now we'll cover up this case before we do that we've got to attach this junction to at this point and uh, that is easily done with uh, some glue and you pull it back all the way that's firmly attached it's not going anywhere now the charger is ready to be assembled these are the this is the bottom half of the casing of the charger itself now I'll just apply some glue around uh, these raised edges and then put this case over that and then replace the clips after applying the glue quickly quickly replace the top casing and then the clips should be in place the outer clips too And now we squeeze the charger body shut and uh, hold it in a vise or something to keep it tight until the glue sets now here is our completed charger it's from magsafe 1 to magsafe 2 it, you can do this for 60 watt magsafe 1 to magsafe 2 that is the conversion from magsafe 1 to magsafe 2 the voltages and the amperes are uh, the same but we cannot do this for 85 watts uh, magsafe 1 and magsafe 2 because uh, there is a difference in uh, the amperes so you can only do this for 45 watts and 60 watts if you like this content kindly like of course uh, share and also subscribe thanks for your time